If a and b are positive numbers, what is the value of the integral from zero to infinity of this big messy thing, dx? Okay, and we're given uh, four pos uh, five possible options for what the value of this integral is. Okay, a and b are positive numbers. All right, well, um, I don't know if uh, there will be a way of figuring this out by analyzing this in some clever way, or if we'll actually have to work out the answer. Um, I mean, I can immediately eliminate I don't typically like using process of elimination to solve these problems, but um, I can eliminate the first option zero because this integrand is either positive everywhere or negative everywhere, depending on whether a or b, a is larger than b or vice versa. So the integral is going to be positive or negative. It's not going to be zero. Um, The sign, yeah, it's not going to be 1 either, because if I switch a and b everywhere, then the integral has the exact same value except multiplied by negative 1, so it can't be b. Um, so each of c, d, and e, I can't eliminate just by looking at, you know, switching a and b, because each of those things does in fact change sign uh, when I interchange a and b. So maybe we try and integrate this. Um, I'm thinking maybe some kind of uh, modification of partial fractions might work. Um, or maybe I, um, like maybe a direct substitution would work. Uh, if I want to write this, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to do a little bit of rough work here, but I'm going to write a over one plus e to the ax plus b over one plus e to the bx and see if I can make, choose a and b in such a way that I get what's uh, written above. Yeah, so I get that um, we can rewrite this as a sum of two functions, which are pr both pretty simple and can probably be integrated directly. Um, I don't necessarily have a great explanation for what drove me to try this, but I mean, the, the form of the denominator here, it kind of just looks like it's asking to be separated into a sum of two fractions where that's one denominator and that's another. Um, but I, I suppose we're somewhat fortunate that the two numerators end up just being constants. They don't, we didn't actually have to choose A and B to depend on X in any way. Um, so this may not have worked. Uh, I may not have been able to find constants a and b such that such that um, we have equality here, uh, in which case I would have tried maybe factoring out a power, you know, e to the ax or from the numerator denominator, something like that. I don't know. Uh, anyway, we now have that this integral, we have an integral from zero to infinity of one over one plus e to the bx dx minus integral from zero to infinity of one over one plus e to the ax dx. Um, is this easy to do? Let's look at the first one. Uh, 
I'm going to try first with a straight substitution. u is equal to 1 plus e to the bx. du is equal to b e to the bx dx. So then dx is equal to 1 over b e to the negative bx du. I don't think this is going to be too kind. Hold on, what if I uh, can probably make a somewhat simpler substitution. u is equal to e to the bx. So this integral is then integral from uh, x is 0, u is 1, to infinity of 1 over 1 plus u, u du, 1 over b. This doesn't look very easy either, although maybe we use partial fractions again. Okay, so I have 1 over b, integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over u minus 1 over 1 plus u du, which is 1 over b. log u evaluated at 1 infinity minus log 1 plus u evaluated at 1 infinity. Let's combine these. 1 over b log u over 1 plus u so this is 1 over b um, this approach is, uh, well, this argument approaches 1 as u goes to infinity, so that's 0 minus log of, as when u is equal to 1, 1 over 2 log a half. So this is equal to log 2 over b. And the other integral is exactly the same, except a negative sign in front, and b is replaced with a. So this means the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus e to the ax dx is equal to log base 2 over a. So my total integral integral from 0 infinity of everything is equal to log base 2 over b minus log base 2 over a, which is a minus b over ab times log 2. And that's option e. Uh, yeah, that was kind of a nice problem. Um, had fun with that. <clears throat> um, I didn't expect to have to use partial fractions a second time. Um, I was expecting, after doing that thing the first time and ending up with this, I was expecting to end up with something that was easy to integrate straight away. Maybe 
some people can see immediately from here what an antiderivative is. Um, in fact, maybe like uh, maybe a guess is something like the log of that. The log of that divided by that, something along those lines. Um, I'm almost. I'm almost tempted to go through this by just guessing an antiderivative. Let's guess the log of 1 plus e to the ax divided by 1 plus e to the bx, because this is equal to log of 1 plus e to the ax minus log of 1 plus e to the bx. And I can see that this is going to work. So if I take a derivative, Let's call this f, then f prime is going to be 1 over 1 plus e to the ax times e to the ax. Wait, this doesn't actually end up working then, does it? Minus e to the bx over 1 plus e to the bx. No, that doesn't work. Um, Maybe yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's fine. Um, I suppose if I really wanted to, I could um, do all the do this substitution backwards. Like take my antiderivative of this thing, which is log of u over one plus u substitute back what u is yeah it's going to get pretty messy it'll be a pretty big complicated expression um but in any case we ended up getting the answer um and i didn't need to i although even though i use process of elimination to throw out a couple of the options um i'm happy that i was that i actually just worked the whole thing out and came to the correct answer here Cute little problem. Thanks for watching.